Good morning all, it's post bag and today it's a BMS special. So in here I have um, a BMS designed for lithium ion phosphates, uh, another little BMS also for lithium ion phosphate and also in here is this, it's the Electrodacus SBMS 4080 Solar BMS. Now I should say uh, a big thanks to Dacian uh, Electrodacus for sending me the SBMS 4080. SBMS stands for Solar BMS. Uh, Dacian also sent me this uh, PCB BMS which is designed for lithium ion phosphate but he says you shouldn't really use it and I'll come back to that a bit later on. And also a th big thanks to uh, Jim Connor who sent me this little BMS. It's also for lithium ion phosphate. And Jim also sent me a little wiring diagram. Yes, that does make sense and it does help massively. So thanks very much, Jim. So what's a BMS? Well, it's a battery management system or a battery maintenance system. Now these things weren't really necessary for lead acid batteries, but for lithium, they're fairly essential because lithium is very intolerant of being overcharged, over discharged, and having cells go out of balance. Now all of these BMSs protect against uh, under voltage, over voltage, uh, over current, and also they do cell balancing. But the big difference is that these two boards here have fixed parameters and uh, the Electrodacus BMS is fully adjustable. You can see that there are buttons here, a liquid crystal screen, and you can adjust pretty much every parameter going. Now I've been wondering why the manufacturer of a BMS board like this, which is designed specifically for lithium ion phosphate, would set the upper cutoff voltage too high and the lower voltage cutoff too low. And it's occurred to me that the only reason that you might do that is to make the capacity of the battery bank appear larger. But at what cost? Well, at the cost of the lifespan of the battery pack. So on a fully adjustable BMS, and this is the only uh, fully adjustable BMS I've ever seen, you can set the parameters, the upper cutoff and the lower cutoff, um, for less capacity, but a much, much longer battery lifespan. Now this SBMS is from Dacian's uh, first production run, the SBMS 4080. Now Dacian has just launched his Kickstarter campaign for his next model, the SBMS 100. And we should go and have a look at that now because there's lots of interesting uh, information on his Kickstarter page. So here it is, here's the page on Kickstarter for the new model. This is the uh, SBMS 100. Plenty of time left to go on this, 36 days still to go. Um, but I wanted to take a look at some of the stuff on here relating to what is a solar BMS and uh, also, why replace lead acid with lithium? Now, there are some quite impressive numbers here. Um, Life EPO 4, 2000 to 8000 cycles at 70 to 100% depth of discharge, compared with lead acid only giving you 200 to 1200 cycles, and that's from 20 to 50% depth of discharge. Um, dis charge discharge efficiency between 95 and 98% for lithium ion phosphate compared with lead acid, giving you back only 50 to 75% of what you put in. Uh, Life EPO 4 can cost the same as less ad lead acid, but with twice the capacity. And how about this? Uh, Life EPO 4 properly protected can last 20 to 30 years. Lead acid only giving you four to six years. Now, if you think those are impressive claims, well, there are some links here to systems which have been set up by Sony and Bosch who have systems running which can uh, back up these claims. So what's new in the uh, new SBMS 100? Uh, well, bigger connectors for higher power, double the power here. Uh, there's a 24-bit ADC. The previous model used the internal ADC, the 14-bit ADC, ADC actually inside the Intersil 94203 chip, um, higher resolution and bigger LCD. Now my only concern here is that um, this is a color LCD. I hope it's as visible 
outdoors in sunlight uh, as the old one is because those monochrome LCDs are very visible outdoors. Uh, Bluetooth 4.1 or Wi-Fi and here is a very nice animated GIF showing how the whole thing is being put together. And uh, there's lots of other good stuff on this Kickstarter page further down uh, including a history of the solar BMS. You can see the uh, first versions and then right up to the SBMS uh, 4080 and uh, all the uh, production run of that particular unit and the unit in action on Dacian's own home system and he's got some graphs of uh, the system in action and the power that he's uh, generating. So for my electric bike project where I'm replacing uh, a couple of worn out lead acid battery packs with lithium iron phosphate cells what I might do to start with is not have any protection, but that's not going to be terribly safe. I'm not going to be able to run these down very low for fear of one of the cells going below its minimum. So I'm likely to play around with these uh, BMSs, but because of the fact that they drive the cells a bit hard, they try to uh, get the maximum capacity out of the cells and therefore will shorten their uh, lifespan, the likelihood is I'll end up using the uh, SBMS because it's configurable, because I can adjust the upper cutoff, the lower cutoff, and I can protect the cells and get a much longer life out of them. And of course, the other thing is I can connect um, solar panels to this PV and uh, charge it through solar. So that's today's BMS themed post bag. And uh, if you are interested in the electric bike project and the lithium iron phosphate uh, cell conversion, uh, I'll probably get back to that when the weather warms up a bit in the spring. Cheerio.